Good day, my name is Kathy, and I'd like to share a lesson that I tried uh, recently with some grade 6 students about equivalent fractions. I was looking over uh, a math chat that took place last week, and the topic was fractions. And I think most teachers would agree that fractions is an area where students struggle and are quite weak most of the time. And we're always on the lookout for ideas. And so that's why I thought I would share this through my blog and create a video for you. But before we begin, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Scott Miller and David Sladke. They have a website called Teaching with Smartboard, where you can find resources and video podcasts. Um, and they have a lot of helpful, helpful resources if you are using a Smartboard. And so when I was planning to go out to this school to work with these particular grade 6 students, I knew that they had a Smartboard, so I wanted to integrate that into the lesson. So when I saw this episode 6 that they had created, I thought, this is something I can use. You can download their video podcast and subscribe through iTunes so you never miss one. Or you can go to TeacherTube and you can watch them there as well. So it's, they're free and they're about 15 to 20 minutes each, so they're really great for learning about Smartboard. So the example that they showed was uh, about a, a burnt lesson plan. And they showed this on the screen with their students and then they had their students find the missing pieces of this algebraic equation. And I thought, oh, this is really great. And they go through the steps and they show how to make this so it looks like a burnt lesson plan. And at the very end, they offer another idea. And they talk about finding missing numbers for frosting recipes. And that's where I thought, okay, this is what I can do with my grade sixes. So these sixes were not my own class. Um, I'm an educational consultant and I'm invited out to schools to do lessons and things like that. So I did not know these students and I was invited out to do some year-end review with a focus on equivalent fractions. So I started off with a story and the story I shared was that my grandmother was a great cook and she made these fantastic chocolate brownies that I loved as a kid. And I had one copy of her recipe and this is what it looked like. And I tried over and over and over again to, to make these brownies, but I was missing how much butter and some walnuts and flour and stuff. And so I had tried to make this over and over again, but it just never tasted right. And I was frustrated because I had this, but I couldn't recreate the brownies that she had made. But I told the kids I was really excited because I just found a more recent recipe of the same chocolate brownies. And uh, I asked them if they could help me find a way to blend or match these and see if we could come up with one final recipe. So what I did on the smart board was I showed them the one on the left with the blue background that um, was the older recipe and then the one on the pink background which is the newer one that I had. And so I encouraged them to look at these two recipes, make any comments and observations with partners, and then I asked them to share with me things that they noticed. And what they realized was that the recipes were missing different pieces of information. And so I asked them whether they thought they could put it together. And they thought they could. So they went ahead and I walked around and watched them work and then I gathered information. And it was really interesting watching how they thought because some students found this quite easy because the first thing that they discovered was that the one um, ingredient that was common to both is the squares of melted chocolate and on the old the original recipe uh, there were four squares and on the the more recent one there were eight squares and so they knew there was something involved with doubling and so they talked about that and then I let them go and so they approached it in many different ways and it was interesting because some of the students even went to doubling the time and the temperature so they went to say, they went so far as to say 20 minutes should be 40 minutes and 350 degrees would be 700 degrees. So we had a conversation around that. That totally shocked me. I didn't anticipate that because even in the recipe I included this, included this and it, it didn't change. Um, but I could tell the kids that baked at home because they were able to say no way you'd end up with burnt brownies. So that was all very interesting. And just so you know in this lesson, um, I have a couple more pages here that I provided. So I have the original recipe, the more recent recipe, and then I have this typed up if you wanted to use it where you, that you could fill in the information and then you can compare it side by side with the two recipes if that helped 
um, take it away from the visual and the burnt or the worn part of the paper. Um, you may want to use it, you may not want to use it. And continued through the lesson and because I was there for review, then I talked to them about ratios and I basically said, you know what, you guys, I don't know if you realize it, but you're working with equivalent ratios. And we talked about the proportion and that it wasn't adding, but it was multiplicative. And they really appreciated that because I pointed out what they were good at and what they were doing. I did add a chart here if you're interested. Um, the parchment paper with the blue column is the original one and the line paper. So if you wanted to transfer the information here. And then I got into here because I wanted to remind students that um, the order, so parchment paper compared to the lined paper would be different than the lined paper to parchment paper because the order in ratios is very important. So I have that just in case you want to try it. Um, I wasn't sure whether they would like to do this, but they actually really wanted to fill in the chart and felt very accomplished when they had done that. So then what I did was after we did that, there was a lot of discussion, took way more time than I anticipated. So this next piece, I thought we would finish off the lesson, but I actually left it for the teacher to try the following day. I took a recipe that I use with my own children at home, and this became an activity for them based on what we had done in class. So I took a smoothie recipe and I shared the information um, and I asked, I had the teacher ask them, what do you notice? Now the one piece of information that you really need to notice here is how many people this serves and to make sure to get into a conversation about what that means. And so the teacher told me that the students understood this very easily that if you served three people, the smoothies were smaller and if you served two people, the smoothies were larger and most kids preferred creating this recipe for two because they love smoothies. So that's an important piece of information. Then the teacher shared this information with all of the ingredients and their, the process and this is a real recipe so if they wanted to go home and try it they could. And basically the question was if you wanted to make enough smoothies for your, everyone in your class how could you do it and how much of everything would you need? And so that moved it more into the problem solving, still using equivalent fractions. But then they have to think about, is the recipe going to serve two or three people? How many people in the class? And then go from there. And then at the end here, I have a couple notes and some questions that the teacher could ask. And finally, uh, just a blank page here with the numbers of bananas, milk, strawberries, and yogurt that they would need for their entire class. Well, that's it for this lesson, and I hope you find it helpful, and you try it out and see how, how the kids do. I think they'll do awesome. Thanks. Have a great day.